So, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of the FICOMPAS team, welcome to the webinar, Good Practice of ESF Plus Financial Instruments uh, for Social Economy. My name is Bruno Rubino. I'm head of uh, FICOMPAS at the European Investment Bank, and I will be your moderator for today. Let me start by saying that this event is organized by FICOMPAS, an initiative of the European Commission, jointly managed with the European Investment Bank. Not everybody might be familiar with all the features with this web-based platform. Uh, therefore, before starting, I would like to give the floor to our host, Victoria Schober, for some quick explanation on how the system works. Victoria, over to you. Thank you. Hello and good afternoon from our side as well. As you have might noticed, you have been uh, muted automatically when entering the webinar. This is just to ensure that we have a smooth event with uh, not too much background noise. But in case you have any questions and would like to ask them, you have two options. You can A, submit them written via the chat box, which you find on the, on the bottom right, or you can raise your hand. This is this little hand icon, which you actually also find on the bottom right. Please feel free to ask questions during the Q&A session. And last but not least, this uh, webinar is recorded. Good. Thank you. Back to Bruno. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. So, uh, social economy. Social economy is defined as uh, the set of association, cooperatives, mutual organization, foundation, and social enterprises whose activity is driven by values of solidarity, the primacy of a power of a capital, and democratic and participative governance, uh, at, which can definitely improve social impacts, for example, through inclusive and decent work. According to the latest uh, available data, there are 2 million social economy entities uh, within or across the EU, accounting for, in average, 6% of EU employment. Social economy are also proven to contribute to social and economic resilience, uh, uh, with a recent example in, in the past and the recent uh, crisis, given the nature of its activities and the long-term orientation of its specific businesses model that can take uh, them um, can make them more resistant to certain market shocks. Um, this capacity to increase um, economic and social resilience is linked to two main factors, two main roles that the uh, social economy plays in the economic system. First, it may address social needs that are often not covered by the market economy and uh, also not complemented enough by the public action. So, for example, in the area of work integration. Second, social economy designs, experiments, and implements innovative way to organize uh, economic activity in an inclusive and sustainable way, thereby inspiring the responsibility, a responsible practice that transform the economic system. And this is exactly the angle, the entry point, I would say, uh, of the webinar of today, which aims uh, at shed light on ESF financial instruments, which have contributed to support uh, social economy. Can you move to the next uh, slide of the agenda, please? Thank you. So for today's webinar, we will start with uh, some uh, opening remarks from the G employment, and then we will have some insights on three case studies, uh, uh, respectively from Bulgaria, Germany, and from Poland. So, for today's event, we have some uh, um, over 90 uh, registered participants from virtually all member states, with the majority of you representing managing authorities or a national regional authority, or authority followed by representative from the financial institution, public and private, and by representative of the European Commission and European Investment Bank Group. The idea of this webinar is to raise awareness, but also to have uh, a good interaction. So I would encourage you to take this opportunity to ask questions 
particularly at the end of the presentation of the different case studies. And also, not only question, but if you want to make a comment, um, please uh, raise your hand. As uh, Victoria mentioned, uh, write your question using the chat box, which can be found uh, uh, on the right hand side of your screen, or use the raise your hand icon, and uh, we will give you the floor. Last but not least, uh, let's move to the next slide, please. In, uh, please note that we are carrying out social media coverage with this uh, webinar through both FICOMPAS and DG Employment social media channel. So with your phone, you can scan the QR codes uh, here in these slides and uh, follow us. And I encourage you to post, to tweet, to retweet, to repost uh, uh, with uh, starting with this QR code. So. Without further ado, I would like to start the first session of today by inviting Anne Branch, Head of the Social and Inclusive Entrepreneurship Unit at DJ Employment Social Affairs and Inclusion to open the webinar of today. And oh, good afternoon and, and welcome. The floor Hi, is yours. Good afternoon, Bruno. Can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Okay, good to see you. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, indeed, I'm here from DG Employment in the European Commission, and I'm really delighted to open this webinar about ESF financial instruments and the social economy on behalf of the European Commission. And it looks like a very interesting session with interesting examples coming up. Um, now, this seminar is really timely and highly relevant for us uh, as the Commission adopted an action plan for the social economy in December last year for a period lasting until 2030. And the adoption by the Commission of this action plan on this topic reflects what's a real growing awareness of the valuable contribution of the social economy. In particular, awareness has been increasing that the social economy addresses numerous societal challenges and creates significant social, social impact. For example, social economy organisations create and retain quality jobs. They contribute to social and labour market inclusion. They drive sustainable economic development. They promote the active participation of citizens and they play an important role in Europe's welfare systems. We also know that they have strong local roots and serve the communities where they are based uh, by retaining economic activities and revenues locally. And they're also really important partners for public authorities in many countries in the provision of social health and care services. Now, despite this growing awareness of the value of the social economy, we see that it's still unevenly developed across Europe and it's underexploited. So the EU action plan seeks to unleash the social economy's full potential across Europe and beyond. Now, through the action plan, the Commission puts forward concrete measures to mobilize this potential in three broad areas. First, it seeks to develop an enabling framework for the social economy. So policy and legal frameworks need to be adapted to the specific business model, including in areas such as state aid, public procurement and taxation. And the action plan will seek to mobilise all relevant stakeholders around this objective, including at regional and international levels. Secondly, the action plan seeks to open up concrete opportunities for the social economy through enhanced support to capacity building and skills, as well as improved access to funding. And I'll come back to that in shortly. And thirdly, the action plan seeks to promote a better understanding of the special features of the social economy among all relevant stakeholders, uh, including policymakers, financial intermediaries and social partners. Now, the plan uh, includes so-called uh, 10 so-called key actions to be implemented in the first two years. But in total, over the, the, the time span until 2030, it mentions around 60 actions or call to action. I'm just going to give you a few highlights here. So a very important thing we're going to do is to launch a new EU social economy gateway, which will provide a clear entry point for stakeholders seeking information on EU funding, policies and initiatives. Next year, we'll propose a council recommendation on developing social economy framework conditions to try to help the, improve the enabling conditions for the social economy at the national level. 
Regarding social innovation, a European competence centre for social innovation is being set up and will be supported under the ESF Plus. And this will make it easier for stakeholders from one corner of Europe to replicate successful ideas already being implemented elsewhere. Regarding young people, a new Youth Entrepreneurship Policy Academy will be launched later this year and it will seek to increase the appeal of social entrepreneurship among young people and ensure that social economy business models are present in entrepreneurship education curricula. And last uh, but not least, we are launching new financial products under the InvestEU programme to increase access to finance, uh, including in cooperation with the European Investment Bank and the European Investment Fund. Indeed, access to finance was a very important focus in the action plan or is a very important focus. And the ESF Plus also has an important role to play in this respect. I mean, in a general sense, the ESF Plus will help deliver a more social and inclusive Europe, implementing the European pillar of social rights and focusing on cohesion policy. By pooling resources, uh, ESF Plus will allow the EU and member states to provide more integrated and targeted support in response to the social and labour market challenges that people in Europe face today. And this includes support to the social economy. ESF Plus allows financial instruments to complement grants and help address the investment gaps that we face. They can play a valuable role and have a significant leverage effect in terms of attracting additional private capital. We see that financial instruments under the ESF have proved already to be a resilient funding mechanism, even during the COVID-19 pandemic. So for instance, during 2021, the amounts paid to final recipients increased by over a third uh, increasing from 182 million euros to 247 million euros, which is very impressive. And since the start of the programming period, over 11,000 final recipients have been supported. Now, under the, under the new programming rules, uh, combining grants and financial instruments is made easier, and the new framework includes special provisions to attract more private funding. In addition, uh, the ESF Plus is well positioned to create synergies between shared management financial instruments and InvestEU. So in the period 2021 to 2027, member states will have more options and more flexibility for putting in place financial instruments for supporting their social economy organisations. Turning to the Fee Compass webinar of today, uh, this is, uh, this is organised by a well-established joint venture between DG Employment and the European Investment Bank. The Fee Compass advisory platform helps to disseminate knowledge of ESF financial instrument schemes that worked well during the past programming period and which could be easily replicated within the new one. Fee Compass is the main tool for the ESF managing authorities and committed stakeholders to deepen their knowledge on the subject. It's based on awareness raising, trainings and capacity building, studies and communication activities. So please don't hesitate to contact the Fee Compass team for any possible question about setting up new financial instruments under ESF Plus. Uh, to conclude, as we rebuild from the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, as we push for a fair green and digital transition, and as we support those fleeing the war in Ukraine, we need to strengthen the social economy, which is well suited to address our current challenges because of the values that Bruno outlined. And financial instruments have an important role to play in this picture. So let me therefore finish by thanking the EIB and uh, my colleagues in DG Employment that are supporting this event with their expertise and especially all the speakers from the managing authorities, the financial institutions and researchers for their presentations. And thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy this interesting webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and thank you for your introductory remarks. I uh, hope you can stay with us and enjoy the uh, the webinar and uh, um, and thank you <laughs> thank you very much so let's move on uh, let's start uh, with the first presentation of today uh, the first case study the first case study is from uh, Bulgaria and I will ask to Dimitar Cherketsov, Head of Department, EU Operational Programs, Fund Manager of Financial Instruments in Bulgaria, uh, to share some of uh, the experience uh, accumulated in delivering two ESF financial products in Bulgaria, not notably the microcredit facility and the cap portfolio guarantee. 
Hello, Dimitar. Good Hello, afternoon. Bruno. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me at this event. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, I'll start with some words about the organization I work for. Uh, this is the fund manager of financial instruments in Bulgaria. It's a state company established a few years ago with the only purpose to manage financial instruments under the shared management programs in Bulgaria. Currently, we have funding agreements with six managing authorities uh, to manage financial instruments co-financed by all five ESI funds, including the European Social Fund. Uh, the total amount of the uh, ESI uh, financing provided to the Fund of Fund is about 650 million euro. And in addition to that, uh, uh, it is expected the Fund of Fund uh, to attract additional private co-financing amounting to 750 million euro, uh, so that to leverage uh, public money to an amount of 1.4 billion euro to support SMEs, startups, municipalities, and uh, other public bodies with financial products for loans, guarantees, and equity and quasi-equity financial products. Up to now, we managed to commit with financial intermediaries about 600 million public money under 36 uh, agreements and uh, more than 1,600 final recipients have been already supported by financing provided under the different uh, financial instruments. Next slide, please. Uh, what we did particularly under the ESF, everything started back in 2014 uh, based on an ex-ante assessment for financial instruments, which identified the market gaps and recommended uh, uh, financial products to be used under the financial instruments. Later on in 2016, after adoption of the ESF program by the uh, Commission, we signed a funding agreement with the managing authority. In 2017, uh, we started a tender for selection of financial intermediaries under the public procurement rules. And at the end of the year, uh, the first two agreements were signed with financial intermediaries. First loan were disbursed in the beginning of 2018. And since then, we are in the phase of implementation and monitoring of the ESF financial instruments. Meanwhile, we uh, carried out some more uh, selection procedures in order to select additional uh, financial intermediaries and to mitigate the risk uh, of failure of some uh, financial instrument under the program. Next slide, please. The program providing financing for the uh, for these financial instruments is Human Resources Development Program in Bulgaria. Uh, the financing is provided under uh, the thematic objective eight uh, for support of self-employment self and uh, uh, startup of uh, enterprises, and under the thematic objective nine for uh, social economy uh, and support for social enterprises. The final recipients, the target groups, are same under these uh, two financial instruments. They include uh, social enterprises and startups owned and managed by, let's say, socially vulnerable groups like uh, young people under 29, people with disabilities, unemployed people, or just people who started their first uh, enterprise or self-employment. In other words, uh, people with no business experience, um, which usually are considered are as uh, risky clients by the financial market in the country. Next slide, please. The first financial instrument is typical loan fund. It provides microcredit, uh, 
uh, uh, at sub-market conditions with lower interest rate to final recipients. But I think the, the main benefit here is that uh, there is financial instrument providing access to financing at all to this target group, uh, because as I mentioned, uh, it is uh, that these uh, enterprises, startups, and uh, social enterprises are considered very risky by the by the banks and uh, financial institutions in the country. Next slide, please. Here you can see some additional details about the loan microcredit facility. It provides uh, microcredits up to 25,000 euro. Uh, the money could be used for investments, uh, but also for working capital by final recipients. Uh, the maturity uh, is maximum 10 years with a grace period uh, lasting up to three years. Um, in every uh, loan, the majority of the financing is provided by the uh, European Social Fund program, uh, while the rest of financing uh, is provided by the financial intermediary uh, at the market interest rate. Uh, but the public money are provided free of charge, so the aggregate, aggregate interest paid by the final recipient is quite lower than the market uh, interest rate uh, for the same type of final recipient or, and for the same type of investment. The financial instruments is set up as de minimis scheme, which means that the financial intermediaries are obliged to transfer all benefits from the uh, free of charge public money to the final recipients. Next slide, please. The other financial instrument is typical CAP portfolio guarantee. It provides uh, partial risk coverage to banks and financial institutions in order to facilitate them to provide uh, financing to final recipients uh, by their own resources. The main benefit here is the low collaterals uh, that uh, final recipients shall provide to the banks. Next slide. Uh, the details about the guarantee uh, financial instrument, it provides guarantee uh, of 80% to every loan in the portfolio. However, the maximum losses at portfolio level are capped at 25%. You can see that this is a typical guarantee, portfolio guarantee financial instruments. There is nothing strange here. Uh, the maturity and the grace period are same, like in the other uh, financial instruments. Uh, however, the amount of the loan here could be a little bit higher, up to the 50,000 euro. This financial instruments is also uh, set as the minimis uh, aid scheme, meaning that all the benefits from the uh, free of charge uh, public guarantee should be transferred to the final recipients. Next slide, please. Up to now, uh, we carried out five tender procedures for selection of financial intermediaries and managed to conclude uh, nine agreements with financial intermediaries, seven under the loan facility and two under the guarantee facility. Our uh, financial intermediaries uh, are uh, banks, uh, but also microfinancing institutions. For example, under the guarantee facility, we have uh, the Unicredit, which is the largest bank operating in Bulgaria, and uh, microfinancing institution, which is a subsidiary of the Bulgarian Development Bank. While under the loan facility, we have uh, First Investment Bank, which is also one of the biggest banks in Bulgaria, and two microfinancing institutions, Microfond and CIS Credit. All these financial intermediaries managed to provide up to now financing to about uh, 575 final recipients, providing them with uh, about uh, 9.6 million euro out of which 6.7 are public money 
and 2.4 are private co-financing. And because of the financing provided to the final recipients, they created more than 560 new job places, uh, meaning that uh, more than 500 people in Bulgaria managed to find their job because of the ESF financing. Next slide, please. Um, here, uh, although our experience under the ESF financial instrument is still uh, very limited, according to me, and I am sure that we have much challenges ahead, I would like to, to share with you some lessons learned um, in our practice during the design and implementation of the financial of the ESF financial instruments. At first, I would like to mention that the partnership is uh, very useful while designing the financial instruments. It's good to have good partnership, of course, with the managing authority to avoid eligibility issues and to have uh, aligned interest with the managing authority. But also, it is very important to have good cooperation and partnership with the uh, financial intermediaries uh, I think we managed to, to achieve that by a market test we carried out in addition to the uh, ex-ante assessment. And this market test uh, was done in the face of design of the financial instruments and helped us at first to raise the awareness among the potential financial intermediaries about the forthcoming financial instruments. But what is more important, according to me, it helped us to verify the terms and conditions of the financial products with the market realities so that to, to design them to the maximum possible extent uh, respecting the day-to-day the -day business of the potential financial intermediaries. It is also very important uh, while thinking about financial instruments to try to reduce to the maximum possible extent the administrative burden for final recipients, but also for financial intermediaries. Uh, because in my opinion, banks and financial institutions are afraid by administrative burden more than anything else. Their usual business is to provide uh, loans to their clients as quickly and easily as possible and uh, to do that efficiently, or in other words, with minimum staff allocated. So every additional task imposed by us to the financial intermediary related to the uh, state aid rules, uh, let's say to the SIF rules, should be minimized to the maximum possible extent and to be limited to the indeed necessary information to respect the uh, managing authority requirements for reporting, for irregularity management and other SIF and state aid related issues. It is also very important to have option to uh, adapt a little bit the financial instruments during the implementation stage. Uh, we did that uh, in 2020 in order to, to adapt the financial instruments with the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we discussed uh, with the managing authority some amendments in the financial instruments and uh, change a little bit the financial parameters. For example, we extended the grace period from two to three years. Uh, we allowed uh, the final recipients uh, possibility to defer uh, payments of interest and principal for a certain period during the COVID-19 pandemic. We derogated some other requirements uh, in the financial instruments, etc. So it's good to have this option and to, to think about uh, it even in the design stage. Um, it is obvious that the promotion and awareness raising is very important. But uh, I think it's good to mention that uh, because uh, the target group of ESF financial instruments usually are people and enterprises that uh, don't have much information about the financial market at all, about the 
financial instruments providing support for such kind of enterprises. So it's very important to have large scale awareness raising uh, campaigns. And uh, we uh, achieve that not only by us, but also by using the, the cooperation with the managing authority and the network that the managing authority has. And of course, our financial intermediaries uh, did their job and uh, promote uh, uh, support to the potential final recipients. And last but not least, I would like to mention that uh, when thinking about the financial instruments, uh, especially the managing authority shall try to avoid cannibalization of uh, financial instruments by grants, or in other words, not to design grant scheme at the same time at, and for the same uh, target group as for the financial instruments. Uh, because uh, applicants uh, will go to the grant provider, but not to the financial instrument. We faced this situation for some certain period uh, in Bulgaria, and indeed, more of uh, most of the applicants went to the grant provider. Uh, I will finish with some words about the ESF plus financial instruments. Uh, Based on our experience, we think that uh, there is uh, a possibility and necessity to, uh, to provide additional support for financial instruments in the period 21-27. There is an ex-ante assessment already elaborated for financial instruments under the ESF Plus uh, programs in Bulgaria. It recommends uh, support for social enterprises and startups, but also uh, for uh, uh, loans for improvement of uh, working environment and uh, other uh, activities facilitating the employees. Um, I would finish with uh, uh, the option for combination of grants and financial instruments under the single operation. Indeed, it is something new uh, in the programming period 21-27, which was uh, not possible uh, in the 14-20 period. And uh, we think that uh, this uh, type of combination uh, has potential for uh, very useful combinations and uh, is instrument that uh, shall be used to, to achieve uh, more financially viable investments uh, for uh, final recipients under the ESF plus. Next slide, please. Uh, here you can see some examples of the uh, investments already provided to final recipients. The ESF final recipients uh, usually are social enterprises and startups. Uh, which are uh, family businesses, shops, restaurants, and other small uh, micro enterprises. We have also uh, very uh, interesting final recipients, uh, like, uh, for example, this one, which provides uh, STEM oriented trading to young children or young people establishing a gym uh, in one of the small towns in the country. But I will leave this matter to my colleague Martina, which represents uh, one of our most successful financial intermediaries to provide you more information about the good examples. Thank you very much. If you have questions, I'm ready to answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dimitar. What, what I retain is uh, uh, is the flexible approach. Uh, so not only in designing this, uh, respecting market rule as much as possible, but also along the implementation whenever there is a need. Uh, of course, the, the administrative burden is always uh, a problem in every financial instrument, and the recommendation is to decrease that as, as much as possible. Uh, the importance of awareness raising uh, that you mentioned and uh, uh, well, I like the, the, this idea to avoid as much as possible the cannibalization of uh, financial instruments by grants. So maybe uh, 
uh, in the coming up programming period where there will be the possibility to combine financial instruments with elements of grants in one operation that will uh, decrease uh, considerably. But anyway, thank you very much for this presentation. I would like to stay with us to uh, participate into a short panel discussion uh, after. And uh, so um, thank you and, and stay with us. And to Martina Grigorova, who is Chief Executive Officer at CIS Credit in Bulgaria, I would like to ask to share the experience of a financial intermediary to manage a risk-sharing instrument for microfinance. So, Martina, good afternoon uh, and welcome. Good afternoon. The floor is yours. Uh, hello to good afternoon to all attendees and thank you for this uh, invitation to EIB. Uh, I'm Martina Grigorova, Chief Executive Officer at Microfinance Institution, CIS Credit. And next slide, please. So, um, in a nutshell about CIS Credit, uh, CIS Credit is established in 2006 and is the second largest MFI in Bulgaria. Although a small market, uh, uh, we are so we are small, but uh, the second in Bulgaria in terms of assets. We are offering loans and business development services to micro and small enterprises, agricultural producers, startups, and social enterprises. Uh, our mission is uh, job creation and support of entrepreneurship. And uh, the strategy of our MFI is based on strong social focus, including mentoring of entrepreneurs, uh, assistance in selling production for agricultural producers, educating clients in, in budgeting, and avoidance of over indebtedness. Uh, CIS Credit is among the first European microfinance institutions that endorsed the European Code of Good Conduct for microcredit provision launched by the European Commission. Uh, is first certified in 2018 and recertified in 2021. Uh, I had the honor to be member of the team that gave its contribution to for elaboration of the code. And uh, I really believe that uh, the code is a label of quality for our MFI and uh, I'm encouraging all MFIs that are still not certified to, to do this. The company is member of European Microfinance Network and Microfinance Center. Next slide, please. About the uh, ESF financial instrument, uh, some milestones. Uh, in December 2017, CIS was selected as a partner fund manager of financial instruments in Bulgaria under the risk sharing microfinance facility and signed the first operational agreement. In June 2019, CIS Credit signed another contract under the second phase of the instrument. And uh, in December 2021, we successfully complete the first operational agreement. The total amount of available funding to final beneficiaries under the financial instrument is uh, two and a half million euro, including funding from the operational program for human resource development, uh, two million euro and co-financing from CIS credit, half million euro. And date for final beneficiaries to benefit from the financial instrument is 30, 1st of December 2023. Next slide, please. The terms of the loan product of CIS credit, um, you could see that they're quite attractive. Uh, loan amounts are up to 25,000 euro, flat annual interest rate of 2.7. Uh, term up to 60 months for working capital and up to 120, let's say 10 years for investment purposes. There are no additional fees for disbursement and managing management of the loan, which is very important for the final beneficiaries. There is no fee for prepayment of loan uh, and uh, we have up to two years grace period for repayment of principal. Of course, uh, something very crucial uh, that is connected to this loan product is that we are providing free of charge consultancy in business planning and development to the entrepreneur. 
and uh, something that is also very appreciated by of course final beneficiaries is that uh, the the collateral options are quite flexible next slide please At the end, um, the benefits from the financial instrument for entrepreneurs is that they are receiving really a tailor-made solution for their needs. On the first place, uh, what I have already mentioned, the free of charge consultancy for business planning, the low interest loan, uh, in interest loan because uh, rate because of the zero percent funding uh, provided under the program the fast approval process uh, there are no specific collateral requirement uh, we are focusing on the entrepreneur uh, the skills of the entrepreneur and the quality of the idea of course the long grace period uh, allows the business to become sustainable before starting to repay principal and um, what um, it's really something that should be mentioned is that uh, an MFI an MFI could support the entrepreneur in management of the business during the whole life of the loan, and uh, they are find, finding just a friend in the in the face of the loan officer, which is very appreciated. Next slide, please. Achieved results uh, as of April two thousand and twenty-two. Um, I really consider that this financial instrument is uh, creating sustainable employment that uh, is long lasting. Uh, total amount disbursed under the uh, instrument so far is uh, 1.6 million euro uh, to 112 uh, final beneficiaries. The average loan amount is uh, 14,000 euro. What is interesting is that we have uh, already six social enterprises that received funding. It's not a big number, but uh, having in mind that they are really reluctant to have a loan uh, instead of grant, this is uh, a very good achievement. Number of entrepreneurs from vulnerable groups who were supported through the financial instrument only by CIS credit uh are 39 uh, these are entrepreneurs with disabilities people under 29 or unemployed for more than six months and something that uh, also we are proud of uh, we have uh, 187 jobs created through our funding provided to final beneficiaries which is 1.7 on average per loan Next slide, please. About the implementation of the financial instrument, uh, of course, there are challenges, but uh, for us, there are a lot, many opportunities. Uh, main challenges are that we are entering into riskier client segment market because um, it's really hard to to give funding to a company that is established yesterday, for example, because we have such cases. Adjustment of our risk management rules in order to assess companies without any history. Also, uh, implementation of specially designed entrepreneur centric rating model that allows entrepreneurs with good ideas to receive loan, uh, even without any collateral learning also to assess repayment capacity of non-profit companies which was new for us and of course uh, all the time we need to teach vulnerable entrepreneurs and social enterprises who are used to grant funding to manage loans uh, because this is quite new for them about the opportunities um, i think that um, uh, this financial instrument allows a sustainable growth of MFI uh, because um, the loan portfolio is increasing by the full amount under the instrument, not only by the co-financing part. Also, the risk sharing on a loan by loan basis without a portfolio cap, I believe is quite uh, impressive. 
and uh, very interesting for MFIs. Following the mission for job creation by supporting the most vulnerable entrepreneurs to, through this uh, risk sharing instrument was also a very good opportunity. And uh, to receive annual management fee of 1.5% by the fund of funds, that partially covers also the free of charge uh, business development services provided to clients. Because um, in my uh, conversations with other colleagues from other countries, this is something that is still uh, a challenge for MFIs to cover this uh, free of charge uh, business development services. Next slide, please. Here are some uh, successful stories uh, that uh, I have prepared. Uh, for example, these are social enterprises because I believe this is interesting for the audience that we have funded. Uh, Bulgarian Association for Personalized Medicine uh, received funding of 15,000 euro. And um, the loan was for working capital. Uh, the NGO is unifying researchers, medical and healthcare professionals and commercial structures in healthcare with the objective to raise the awareness of the personalized medicine approach. Very interesting client. Uh, Def Now uh, that uh, received funding um, of 25,000 euro. This is a project by Listen Up Foundation that aims at providing support and proper education to deaf people and their families. Synergia Foundation funding of uh, around 13,000 euro. Uh, the mission of the NGO is to improve the well-being of visually impaired people by implementing success successful social entrepreneurship practices. And one more example, Foundation Dr. Boris Dimitrov uh, that received funding for uh, development of their activity. They are providing scholarships to young people to receive medical education. Next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, maybe there is one slide missing. Previous one. Okay, thank you. Uh, these are examples of supported startups. Uh, and um, here we are talking really about core startups that haven't any history. Uh, Masterclass Borchev uh, received funding of 25,000 euro. Uh, the project is a young entrepreneur with disability under the age of 29 who has started a family bakery in the remote village of Dren. Really impressive entrepreneur and we are happy that we could, we could provide him a funding and uh, advice. Kran Impex Commerce, uh, the entrepreneur decided to return to Bulgaria after a long time of working abroad and to open a restaurant in the city of Plovdiv. Um, this restaurant is uh, has just uh, launched, and uh, the jobs expected to be created next month is about five. Uh, one very good example about um, the challenge of uh, MFIs to be more to enter in more riskier market and to, to find the, the balance between risk and good idea is the client made right. Uh, the funding was only 17,500 euro. Uh, here, the interesting thing is that we decided to not take any collateral, even a guarantor, because we really liked the idea. And um, the project is creation of innovative online platform for tailor-made shirts production. Uh, the project is successfully launched and start the production in the city of Pleven. Uh, jobs created after funding is uh, impressive, 13. HR Partners is funding uh, again uh, for young women to start uh, a business. Uh, the woman, woman is again yacht under 29 who is producing and selling, uh, selling online organic cosmetics in the city of Smolian 
and the loan helped her to launch new product line and become sustainable. Next slide, please. Uh, I would like to share here the lessons learned from uh, the perspective of CIS credit. On the first place, I really consider that uh, this is a successful financial instrument that is meeting the needs of entrepreneurs. Uh, also, this financial instrument is a precondition for building an entrepreneurial ecosystem in the country, because uh, three years ago, I would say that there was not no such in Bulgaria. This is a pilot attempt for the transition of grant support for vulnerable groups to loan product that so far is perceived very positively by all parties. Also, the financial instrument is a good example for partnership between government bodies and MFIs and the joint forces that uh, uh, we are all making for promotion of the financial instrument. Also, um, I think that uh, this instrument is meeting the ESF and government goals for financial inclusion through comprehensive and market-based support of vulnerable groups through the expertise of uh, MFIs. And what is also very important is that the financial instrument is contributing to the stable growth of the MFIs uh, and the promotion of microfinance as a really powerful tool for sustainable job creation. Next slide, please. Thank you and uh, all, uh, all your thoughts and all your questions are very welcomed. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martina. Um, uh, what I retain is uh, uh, that it's important for the success of the financial instruments to meet the, the needs of the entrepreneur. And actually, your instrument meets those needs. Um, also, the importance that you gave to move from full full grant dependency to a transition towards loans. So, I like this this attempt uh, and actually the successful attempt um, also that financial instruments contribute to the uh, to the growth of microfinance provider and um, also the promotion of uh, microfinance uh, as in, uh, as a tool for creation of uh, stable jobs this is it's very important and also uh, I think I understood that uh, you still are looking for possibility, but this is, I would say, a common problem for every or a number of, of uh, financial instruments uh, to find uh, ways to support the cost of uh, BDS services. This is also important. And also, I would like to mention, and thank you for mentioning this, you mentioned the code. I guess you're referring to the European Code of Good Conduct for uh, Microfinance Provider. Uh, and thank you for mentioning this because we can uh, say now that under InvestEU, there will be a win actually a sub window in the window of, of um, uh, social investments and skills window where uh, the microfinance and social enterprise uh, finance provider uh, will be taken care of by improving and uh, increasing their skills and their knowledge with a view uh, to, first of all, uh, micro land and uh, uh, finance social enterprises more, and also to adopt uh, the code of uh, good conduct, the code uh, for the one which are in the market. Uh, thank you very much. I, I would like to, at this stage, to, to, to open the floor for uh, some uh, question or remarks. So, if you are interested to submit, and I can see that there are already some questions, please write your question in the uh, chat box. And uh, um, let me start, let me see. Um, uh, I'll just confirm, so there was a question. The, the slides, the presentation will be put uh, on the web page of the Compass uh, after uh, the end of this webinar, not this afternoon, but in the coming days. 
So this is the, 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 the first question. Uh, then uh, it's, uh, we have a question from Melvin Koenigs. I represent a Dutch private fund aimed at specializing on financing community-driven social enterprises. This Dutch national fund now has an annual budget of 1 million for an average of six social companies. There is a lot of experience and network, but a shortage of money. Will or can InvestEU fund or fund, do we need to address regional management? So let's say um, this is, I, I, as far as I understand, this is a, a national fund. Uh, I would say that there are two ways, as Anne um, presented, uh, there are um, instruments at uh, assuming that there are at national level on the share management and this is managed through the regional managing authorities or if you are eligible and if you are a um, um, financial intermediary then um, for uh, under InvestEU you can directly contact the EIF. The EIF has already uh, launched in this respect a call uh, to uh, for for uh, the financial intermediaries to express their interest and to start engaging with the European Investment Fund under InvestEU. I hope I, I was able to answer uh, your uh, question, Melvin. But uh, just in case, uh, uh, please um, let us know. So, um, as I said, if you have other questions, uh, please use the chat box. Uh, Dimitar and uh, Martina, I, I do not see you. Uh, please switch on your camera. Okay, very good. Ah, nice smile. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. So let's start uh, with uh, uh, Dimitar. Um, you explained the the support to um, microfinance and uh, social finance provider in Bulgaria. Do you think that there, there will be a need for support also in the next uh, programming period? So do you, are you planning a risk sharing and a guarantee uh, instrument as well for the period coming up or that's it? Um, yes, I do believe that the, uh, there is a need for support for social enterprises and for startups in the period 21, 27 as well. Uh, the ESF financial instruments uh, implemented in Bulgaria so far uh, proved to be useful for final recipients, but also for uh, financial intermediaries. Uh, with our joint efforts, we managed to promote the benefits of financial instruments uh, and uh, to develop a little bit the ecosystem for financial instruments in Bulgaria. And in my opinion, it is rational to this approach to be extended uh, in the current uh, programming uh, period as well. This is also the recommendation of the ex-ante assessment already elaborated for ESF plus financial instruments. So I hope that the managing authorities in Bulgaria will provide financing for uh, financial instruments under the ESF plus also. As regards the type of the financial products guarantee or risk sharing uh, loan, I think that uh, both of them have their pros and cons. Uh, currently, the banks and financial institutions in the country uh, have uh, much of liquidity in Bulgaria and uh, they declare that they need more guarantee. Uh, however, this may be not the case in the years ahead, uh, especially if the European Central Bank follows the Federal Reserve in increasing the interest rates. So in our opinion, uh, both risk sharing loans and guarantees have their place in the financial instruments in the future in Bulgaria. Okay, thank you. Um, let's build on, uh, on, the, uh, on the answer of Dimitar. So, uh, SIC went for, um, SIS went for a risk sharing loan. And uh, given that there might be uh, a bit more uh, liquidity in the market, 
uh, would you also consider a, a guarantee for your institution uh, uh, in the in the coming period, assuming that you you're gonna participate in the in the in the next round of financial instruments? Well, microfinance institutions are not taking deposits, and this makes them less liquid uh, than banks. So. For sure, uh, I consider that uh, the risk sharing financial instrument is uh, the only option for MFIs uh, because uh, they are relying on funding on the first place from investors and then uh, the guarantees are not always the option. Okay, very clear. Um, Dimitar. Uh, what are your uh, takeaways of the relation with financial intermediaries? Of, uh, apart from CIS, uh, don't say things that you shouldn't say, uh, <laughs> uh, which are deploying the financialists. I'm joking, uh, but also together with CIS. Uh, well, as I mentioned, uh, uh, it is very important to have good uh, cooperation with the financial intermediaries. And we try to achieve that with all our uh, intermediaries, not only with CIS credit. Um, I would say that uh, uh, we as a fund of fund manager and the financial intermediaries actually have a common goal, common objective, and it is to have the financial instruments invested in time and in eligible investments. That is why we try to provide uh, support to financial intermediaries uh, during the implementation stage, providing them with some, let's say, clarifications about the eligibility issues related to final recipients or uh, to activities to be financed. And uh, we nominated uh, uh, expert in the fund of fund, which is some kind of relationship manager to, uh, to serve as a point of contact uh, for the financial intermediaries and think that this is useful option. Uh, it seems from our perspective, I hope the financial intermediaries also see this as something useful. And um, it is indeed very important to, to have financial intermediaries uh, on board uh, following our common let's say goal to to have financial instruments effectively deployed to final recipients very good thank you thank you very much um so there is one question related to bds non-financial support services which are are key especially uh, for the organization which works uh, uh, with you. Uh, the question is, uh, if, the, uh, if they uh, were not uh, covered by the fund of fund, how much additional funding uh, would you have to raise in order to su successfully deploy uh, the uh, financial support loans? Uh, probably this is a question to both of you. Uh, Martina, would you like to start? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, actually, uh, the fund, the management fee of fund of funds is um, covering the management fee of the loan, like uh, elaboration of the contract and monitoring of the loan. And of course, I said partially the business development services because they are quite uh, expensive, but uh, MFIs, are uh, this is part of their mission to support entrepreneurs and i consider that all mfis are providing business development services and the benefit uh, from this extra effort is that um, your clients are becoming more sustainable in the future and when you are designing their loan together with them and you are budgeting together with them and when they know that they could call you when they have some problem, then the the loan is not going in default. What is the final goal for us, especially? I could say that the NPL of uh, this instrument for six credits is below five percent, which is, I think, very good score. 
So uh, maybe for the non-aware, uh, uh, NP, uh, NPO, NPL, what, what do you mean by that, the acronym? Or the uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> non-performing clones. Okay, thank you. No, I was uh, yes. just, just to, to make sure. Uh, Dimitar, you, yeah. you, your view on the BDS costs. Yeah. My, my opinion here is that uh, this kind of additional services provided by the financial intermediaries are indeed uh, very important and crucial for successful investments. And I mean that uh, here uh, we can see the, the uh, option for combination of grant and financial instruments under a single operation and uh, combination that covers uh, technical support. Uh, I mean grant provided to the financial intermediary to cover partially this type of uh, business development services and of course uh, investment grant to be used by the financial intermediaries to fill the financially gaps that uh, in some investments uh, that exist in some investments in order to achieve financially viable investments but yes the, you know the the management fee is limited by the uh, EU legislation up to some thresholds. Uh, Martina mentioned uh, 1.5, which is quite uh, low management fee actually, uh, and it cannot cover all the necessary expertise uh, to be used for uh, providing support to final recipients in order to have their investments, their business plans financially viable. So, in my opinion, uh, there is a room for combination of grants for technical support and financial instruments in a single operation. Thank you, thank you. Uh, still, the question of the, the limit of the uh, management fee uh, appears. And there is a question uh, for you, Martina. Uh, do you employ specific cost efficiency, smart technologies enabling you to operate a microfinance scheme with only a 1.5% annual management uh, cost and fee. What is your secret there? As I said, uh, our goal first is uh, our mission to, to support entrepreneurs. And uh, this is why we are okay with, uh, with this figure. Um, and I strongly agree that uh, this uh, management fee should be uh, higher and maybe through some point of grant, this should be achieved uh, in future financial instruments. Um, and to, about digitalization and uh, if there is something specific, uh, I think that uh, uh, at CIS Credit, we have already the routine to, to deal with entrepreneurs and to be their best friend, let's say. Uh, and uh, we are, seeing this instrument as an opportunity for growth. And this instrument is only to support entrepreneurs, not to, to make us sustainable, really sustainable. Okay, very good. Um, then uh, maybe a question um, concerning, uh, again, the importance of non-BDS services. Uh, did you, uh, sorry, the, uh, concerning BDS services, did you con uh, conduct a study at, uh, on best practice for non-financial services when, uh, uh, when implementing your project or in structuring your offer? How does it work? Uh, we are having, um, by us, everything is quite stranger. Standard, uh, standardized, it means that uh, there are steps for assessment of the entrepreneur and when, when we assess an entrepreneur is already um, approved, almost approved uh, as a basic guy framework of the idea, we are contacting uh, him and we are making this conversation about uh, what are the goals, what uh, are his expectations? Is this the appropriate amount that uh, should be taken or we could uh, be more uh, conservative and um, propose lower amount, for example? Um, 
and uh, in general this is uh, a conversation with the uh, with the client they are coming to the office or we are making it through phone calls um and uh, i think that uh, these are the steps for assessing entrepreneurs and uh, providing the business development services okay very good so uh, another question in uh, in describing your case study your presentation um, it looks all very successful, very good, uh, and everything went uh, according to plans. And we all know that this is not true. So uh, maybe some, uh, <laughs> some uh, well, uh, the, the question talks about bad stories, or let's say things that did not go according to plans. Uh, and in particular, uh, some uh, beneficiaries which were not able to repay the loan. Uh, how often does it happen and uh, why doesn't happen so often? I can anticipate your answer. I, yes, I think the, the, the answer is, is clear for everybody. What went wrong? The COVID crisis. This was the, the challenging part of uh, the implementation of the instrument because even good ideas uh, were not able to, to develop in the way they have planned um the fund of funds uh, allows allowed us to to introduce additional grace period if necessary for the clients in order not to become defaulted and uh, i think that uh, if this COVID crisis didn't happen because during the COVID, it's normal that uh, people are reluctant to start business uh, i think that uh, the results would have been much better. Really, I think that um, we could, we would make it better <laughs> than this. So I don't think there is uh, there is uh, something uh, that doesn't work went uh, as expected apart from the COVID crisis. Very good. Maybe a, a question uh, uh, to you, Dimitar. Uh, can you give us at least, uh, uh, f uh, when it comes to Bulgaria, the definition of uh, social enterprise? Which one are eligible and which one are not really eligible? Uh, when designing the financial instruments, uh, uh, we follow the definition um, in the directive uh, for the uh, social innovation initiative, uh, meaning that social enterprises should be enterprises focusing uh, mainly the social uh, benefits, the enterprises that uh, should use the profit uh, generated by enterprises, at least 50% for social uh, activities, and uh, it should be uh, managed in a way uh, respecting the, um, how to say, market uh, business uh, type of uh, management of the company. The definition is uh, very similar to the one established by the ESF plus regulation for the 21-27 programming period, which very is uh, quite uh, challenging, let's say, because there are no much uh, social enterprises in the country that uh, cover this definition and that on the other hand are uh, considered uh, enough uh, uh, viable from the financial intermediary to be provided by uh, to be provided with loans under the financial instruments especially by the banks because the social enterprises uh, Martina mentioned are usually non-government organization with uh, very limited assets, with uh, very limited or uh, no financial history, no track records, no uh, profit uh, in the future that could be assessed as viable. And it's very difficult indeed to provide financing to this kind of uh, social enterprises, uh, financing which uh, part of which should be provided by financial intermediary, financial intermediaries by their own money, by their own risk. Absolutely clear. 
Very good. We're leading towards uh, the, the end of this session, but before releasing you, one question, same question to both of you. What would you do, assuming that you have the possibility, um, what you would do differently or better in the future to set up uh, Demeter, the scheme that you launch or a similar scheme, and Martina, the financial instruments that you are implementing? So, uh, Dimitri first and Martina thereafter. Well, what we will do different uh, depends not only on us, but uh, I would say that uh, I that we will do our best to convince the managing authority to apply the options provided by the EU legislation for 21-27 in order to design the financial instruments in more efficient way using the option for combination in a single operation using the option for technical support for uh, business development services but services that are provided by the financial intermediaries uh, and not by the parallel grant scheme because uh, we have in bulgaria a parallel grant scheme designed to provide such kind of uh, support to potential final recipients and uh, there were much uh, beneficiaries under the, that scheme but very small part of them uh, design a financially viable uh, business plans to receive uh, financing under the financial instruments so uh, in my opinion the right way to do that is to uh, to provide financial intermediary with some money for this uh, objective in order to have financially viable investments. Very good. Martina, from your point of view. I absolutely agree with uh, Dimitar that um, the one thing that the market really expects is uh, the combination of grants with loan. Um, I personally don't believe in grants as a sustainable tool for support, uh, but uh, they are necessary when they are achieving some European goals. For example, I would uh, uh, give grants to a company like a partial, like a part of the financial instrument to companies that would like to achieve some energy efficiency in the production or to implement some uh, very uh, specific uh, software or management uh, system that would allow the company to grow. But uh, grants to using grants for working capital for me is not sustainable. Uh, but as I said, this is what the market expects and uh, maybe should be considered the combination. And of course, the, the coverage of uh, the non financial services that MFIs are providing by grant scheme that is part of the financial instrument i think that this will would really help uh the the development of the mfi and the instrument very good thank you uh i will um i can see that there are no other question i would break here not without uh, thanking you very much for your contribution, for your effort. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of interest in this and so quite a lot of questions from the audience. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, we're going to have uh, a, a, a short break now. Uh, we're going to reconvey at uh, um, four o'clock uh, sharp, uh, so 16 hours. Um, and in the meantime, we, we're going to play a, a, a video uh, during this uh, short break. So see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back for um, to the second part of this uh, webinar. So for, for, for this session, we have a small, uh, small change in the program. The speaker, which was supposed to present, is unavailable. So <clears throat> we asked uh, Eugenio Saba, who is a financial instrument advisor uh, at the SMEs and Social Finance Unit uh, at the uh, advisory department of EIB, uh, to present the uh, case of uh, Saxony in Germany. Eugenio, welcome, and over to you.
Thank you, Bruno. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Great. Thanks. So, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Eugenio Saba from the FI Compass team at the European Investment Bank. I'm delivering this presentation today, and so this is, a, uh, I would say, a, a fresh new uh, case study uh, recently issued under the, um, the FI Compass advisory platform. Uh, so I encourage you to um, uh, go to the website of the uh, Fee Compass platform and check it out in order to uh, provide further information to those who I am about to, to provide you. So let's uh, start with the next slide with uh, kind of an appetizer of uh, what is this, uh, this presentation about. It's about uh, an ESF microcredit fund in, um, in the German region of, uh, of Saxony uh, with a, a loan limit of uh, Euro 20,000. The, the target group are uh, micro uh, enterprises, either startups or um, already operating once uh, for a maximum period of, um, of five years. We are talking about uh, a financial instrument which deals with ESF resources from the 2014-2020 uh, programming period, mostly, but not only, because we will see that uh, there is an, um, an interesting use of uh, reflows. And also uh, important that there is a combination of the uh, of the financial instrument with uh, grant measures uh, to provide a comprehensive package of um, support to entrepreneurs in the region. So let's uh, let's kick this uh, this case study off with the next slide. Uh, let's take things from uh, from the very beginning. So why there was a need to uh, establish and to set up a financial instrument under the ESF? The uh, the background is that uh, Saxony uh, features a uh, quite uh, low density in uh, in self entrepreneurship and in entrepreneurship, uh, generally speaking, compared with other regions in um, in Germany. And then, unsurprisingly, in, in Saxony, like um, everybody um, in, in everybody in, in any other region in in the country, there are. There are Problems that are issues faced by microfinance providers, by, by sorry, by micro enterprises, and those issues are quite well known to uh, those who are familiar with the sector. So I'm um, meaning that uh, micro entrepreneurs lack, uh, for instance, in financial literacy. Uh, they uh, even when they are skilled, they normally face some uh, some struggles in um, uh, in finding finance uh, through uh, commercial banks or other uh, traditional uh, credit channels. So they are not really the the best client for uh, for a bank. This situation brought the managing authority to uh, the, um, the need to the uh, to the wish to set up a financial instrument, um, but not only a financial instrument. So the the aim was to have a comprehensive uh, package uh, to tackle this uh, um, uh, this structural uh, lack of support to to social entities. So. We're talking about the microfinance part, the financial product, which, by the way, uh, is not something uh, entirely new in Saxony because the ESF um, have been used uh, since uh, 2006 in order to provide uh, micro loans in um, in the regions, and has been coupled with the technical assistance grants, uh, which are disbursed uh, and which are provided before the the project is kicked off. And um, we are talking about uh, support to the to the application phase, support to business planning, uh, helping out the uh, the entrepreneurs to uh, to. Uh, Planning soundly and uh, a viable, uh, um, a viable uh, entrepreneurial project, uh, uh, climate alignment, and things like that. Um, this has uh, all, uh, has all been provided within a, um, within a specific uh, objective uh, uh, of the ESF regional OP in Saxony, which is uh, named here strengthening startups and, and entrepreneurship. So within the same, um, uh, the same objective, the managing authority provided the financial instrument and the uh, grant portion of the support. Let's switch to the, uh, to the next slide, please. 
and again elaborating on the the rationale behind the the measure it's um it's interesting to say that the esf is uh is filling a market gap uh for micro enterprises um so the, the situation also uh, sees a decreased commitment of uh, of national funds, which were ded dedicated to um, uh, to microfinance and to uh, micro entrepreneurship. Uh, there were uh, funds from KFW, which is the national promotional bank in uh, in Germany, uh, and such funds were providing uh, intermediate lending to the ultimate benefit of uh, microfinance um, uh, of micro entrepreneurs but uh, lately such kind of instruments have been grouped together and have been uh, streamlined and so uh, the the amount of finance uh, for uh, micro entrepreneurs has decreased over the years um, Saxony has uh, implemented financial instrument under ERDF for quite a while as well, but um, even though they were targeting SMEs at large, um, they, uh, they were um, difficult to access for uh, micro entrepreneurs. They didn't focus on, uh, on micro entrepreneurs and startups. There is also a, a, a specific national legal framework to be taken into account, which is the fact that microfinance institutions in Germany need to uh, work together with banks. So they work with banks, they, um, they appraise projects uh, much like banks, so they are very reluctant to lend to, um, to micro entrepreneurs. And um, again, why so? Because the, the micro loans are a very uh, risky and I would say not entirely profitable business for, for many banks. They, uh, there is a lot of work and paperwork uh, behind small scale transactions. And uh, the, so the, the profit margins for the uh, financial institutions that are active in microfinance, are, um, um, uh, profits are very thin. So here is where the ESF uh, kicks in and where the ESF, I would say, uh, meets the social mission of, uh, of microfinance, which is, uh, as this uh, big box says, to create employment and social inclusion through uh, self-entrepreneurship. Let's move to the next slide to see uh, in practice how this financial instrument has been implemented. Uh, well, it, it's been a very, very uh, easy one in, uh, in its implementation structure because uh, I guess 95 to 99 percent of uh, the the work uh, um, um, the work that uh, is involved within the deployment of this financial instrument is performed by this uh, uh, saxon development bank which is the national uh, the uh, regional agency for uh, responsible for um, uh, implementing labor market and business development measures in uh, in saxony um, as i was saying uh, ESF microcredits uh, have been uh, developed, uh, de deployed since uh, uh, quite a while, uh, 16 years now, and this helped in building capacity and expertise within the Saxon Development Bank. And this uh, situation made quite straightforward and easy for the managing authority uh, to take the decision of uh, uh, providing a direct award and uh, appointing directly uh, Saxon Development Bank uh, with implementation of the financial instrument. So, um, as I was saying, the, um, this development bank does it all from uh, uh, launching the, uh, the calls for expression of interest uh, uh, targeting the, uh, the applicants to receiving the application, appraising them, uh, uh, disbursing the loans, servicing the loans, and reporting all the information uh, back to the level of the managing authority. Of course, to do such, um, um, such, such tasks, the Saxon Development Bank is uh, remunerated uh, uh, and it's remunerated in accordance with the applicable rule set under the um, uh, common provision regulation for the, for the structural funds. To date, the information we, uh, we have is that the, um, the, the management costs and fees uh, amount to 2.68% of the committed resources to the financial instrument and are, of course, based on uh, the, the committed amounts, the disbursement, uh, the disbursed loans, and they are uh, kind of checked against the, um, the timesheets of the uh, involved uh, personnel in the Saxon Development Bank. So uh, there is kind of um, uh, 
check against the uh, the work that has been uh, uh, actually performed by uh, uh, by the body implementing the financial instrument. Um, the, the the last line is about how long did it take from uh, the ex ante assessment, which was launched in April 2015, to the first disbursement of the loan, which was in July 2016. Compared to other experiences, we had uh, other financial instrument. We uh, we saw it's um, definitely not that much. Now let's move to the uh, next slide, and we can see some other interesting features of uh, this financial instrument. We said that um, it's an ESF financial instrument, and of course uh, it's true because the ESF uh, fund from 2014-2020 are used to provide microcredits in the subregions, which are uh, transition subregions, uh, and you see them in uh, in this chart, uh, Dresden and Chemnitz. Uh, but there is uh, also a, a component on the use of the reflows, as I was uh, mentioning before. Uh, reflows from previous programming periods are used to uh, deploy the, the same instrument uh, also in, um, in more developed uh, subregions of Saxony, so it's Leipzig, uh, plus another uh, small portion of, um, of another region. And um, this is quite uh, interesting because if you step in the shoes of uh, final recipients, you just see that uh, whatever you are in Saxony, you are provided with the same financial with the same financial product, same terms, same conditions, uh, etc. And from the managing authorities is is, uh, is interesting because it uh, it it can help overcome some uh, issues that might arise when a certain region, uh, a certain territory governed by the same managing authority is split into uh, transition or uh, more developed uh, or less developed regions. And of course, this uh, um, then results in some uh, implications and uh, potential issues in terms of what's eligible expenditure, what's not. By using the reflows, the ESF managing authority managed to uh, to overcome all of that. Um, applications to the financial instrument can be submitted online, but not only. Uh, there's also the, the possibility to do it on paper, and this scatters for the needs of those who are, uh, I'd say, uh, not 100% uh, um, familiar with the um, uh, with the uh, with digital. Uh, uh, with the digital, and um, of course there are some uh, generic eligibility checks. Uh, so the the Saxon Development Bank will check whether you are uh, a micro entrepreneur, whether you don't operate in uh, in sectors excluded by the uh, applicable EU and local regulation. Uh, but also uh, it's interesting that the applicants need to propose, of course, a viable business plan, and this needs to be kind of uh, checked endorsed by uh, the local chamber of uh, industry and commerce or by other sectoral associations active in uh, in the area. This really provides with uh, uh, with the first um, with the first check that uh, in many cases can uh, uh, can steer and can uh, uh, can help the uh, appraisal process of the uh, Saxon Development Bank. Another uh, requirement for the uh, for the applicants is that any project shall generate at least one full time employment, and of course, the uh, in order to raise awareness uh, to potential applicants and um, uh, uh, and final recipients, uh, the the communication activities are performed uh, by both the Saxon Development Bank and the uh, managing authorities and intermediate body. Now let's move to the next slide. We can uh, maybe have a look at what are the terms and conditions, what's the financial product. So we, we've talked uh, quite extensively about the, the financial instrument, but what, what's the offer? Again, the financial the, the final recipients, uh, just to, um, uh, to recall them, they are uh, new businesses or micro enterprises which uh, are operating uh, for no more than five years. The loan is, uh, up to uh, 20,000 euros, so it's even a little bit less than the microfinance uh, threshold, which is 25,000. There's a minimum amount uh, of uh, 5,000, and the historical average uh, observed by the Saxon Development Bank is uh, 17,000 euros. And it's possible to apply more than once within, um, of course, the same uh, um, 
uh, I would say the, uh, the same period of existence of the of the applicant. So, meaning that the the micro enterprise uh, still needs to be either a startup or uh, um, operating uh, for less than five years, and at the same terms and conditions of um, of the first loan, uh, which has been uh, uh, which has been disbursed. The current interest uh, um, uh, interest applied to the loans is uh, one percent per annum. And there are no fees, uh, including if the final recipient is uh, uh, eager to repay early the loan because the business is going very well. Uh, there is no uh, collateral requirements and the maturity uh, can be up to six years with the grace period possible if asked by the, the applicant. Um, interesting to, to know as well is that the, uh, the micro loan do not cover 100% uh, of the of the project amount. The, um, there is skin in the game requested by the uh, Saxon Development Bank, uh, which is no less than 20% of uh, of the project. So micro loans covers the 80%, and the uh, and own let's say own funds cover uh, 20%. And the, the the applicable state aid uh, regime uh, is the the minimis. Um, it's also interesting to to, to notice, uh, and it's uh, highlighted in the box um, uh, in the pink box that uh, around half of the applicants they take advantage of the um, of the whole package that I was mentioning before. So, not only the financial instrument, but also the um, uh, the uh, technical assistance which is provided uh, beforehand and during the, the implementation. Uh, for those of you familiar about uh, how this uh, um, uh, how the combination is managed. Uh, uh, maybe it's interesting to uh, um, uh, to know that the financial instrument and the grants are uh, delivered under separate operations. This gives a little bit of flexibility to the managing authority and to the uh, body implementing the financial instrument. So, the Saxon uh, um, the Saxon Development Bank to um, to have for, it gives more flexibility in a way that. Uh, uh it's not mandatory that the uh, um that the final recipient needs to apply necessarily for the final financial product when uh he has received the advisory services uh whilst uh, in the current programming period in in the past programming period 2014 2020 um combining in a single operation uh, um I mean, was was a little bit more complicated, so um, it needed to be that um, the grant portion was ancillary to the uh, financial product. Most likely, in the next program period, it will be uh, much much easier, as the Bulgarian colleagues were mentioning uh, earlier today. Let's move to the uh, to the next one because uh, it, it's interesting. Just to mention this uh, this other feature of the financial instrument, we were talking about skin in the game. We were talking about own funds. In in some uh, under, uh, in some cases, it's not that easy, uh, not even to provide the the twenty percent request uh, of the uh, own funds to the uh, to the project. So um, an idea that uh, came up uh, during the implementation uh, to the managing authority and to the uh, Saxon Development Bank was to partner with the crowdfunding platform Startnext. Uh, they are quite well popular in. Um, in, uh, in Germany, and so they they kind of uh, signed a partnership. Um, the the applicant can uh, also uh, preliminary to ask for a micro loan can uh, run a crowdfunding campaign on the Startnext platform, raise the amount of money that then is considered by the uh, Saxon Development Bank uh, bank as a own. Uh, um, as own funds for the for the project, so it's uh, the, the equity part part of the project can be raised through uh, the crowdfunding platform. We don't have many uh, data to see how um, uh, how well this um, this partnership is performing, or uh, if really uh, managed to boost the uh, the applications to the financial instrument. But uh, surely it's uh, it's an innovative solution that can uh, help. Uh, uh, can help applicants to uh, overcome uh, on funds uh, issues. Next slide now. A uh, few data about the achievements of the microcredit fund. Uh, 
these are implementation figures of December 2020. They are a little bit outdated now. The fact is that the uh, managing authority is uh, comfortable to share uh, implementation data only when uh, after the, uh, such data are um, displayed and published in the annual implementation report. So the annual, you, you should know that the annual implementation reports for 2021 are uh, going out more or less in this period of the year, so a uh, little bit more patience, and we will be in a position to up to update also this uh, this information. Anyway, uh, out of a target of uh, 627 uh, loan agreements, 420 uh, more or less have been already signed. 46% uh, of the uh, finance initiatives are uh, led by uh, women. Uh, okay, it's not still. Um, uh, perfect 50%, but it's still way above the Saxony average of uh, uh, entrepreneurship. 320 jobs have been created and 89% um, is the survival rate uh, measured um, after one year after the disbursement of the loan. And 4% is the default rate at portfolio level uh, to date, which is a very, very good, uh, very, very good result. Let's move to to the next one. Just, uh, I mean, I, I won't spend too much uh, uh, time on this one because those are uh, examples and uh, success stories you can find also in the published uh, in the published report. Um, maybe the, the the first one is very interesting because uh, for for ESF uh, practitioners is uh, is kind of the perfect story because uh, first um, there's a um, vocational training or lifelong uh, uh, learning uh, which helped the um, the applicant to uh, build and uh, uh, enhance its uh, skills in um, as a as metal worker and then there's the financial product which uh, allowed him to uh, to set up his own business while the second one is uh, a hairdresser that decided to uh, set business in a rural area Let's move to the next slide, uh, which is also the, the final one. Uh, a few uh, a few considerations. Uh, uh, let's draw some conclusions from uh, all this uh, all these slides. Areas for for improvement. Um, to be hundred percent honest, uh, uh, even though the financial instrument is quite lean and and simple as you have seen, uh, still the application procedures uh, have been described as um, somewhat cumbersome by by applicants. Uh, according to who you are and what's your background, there can be even ten or more documents to be included in the application uh, procedure. Uh, there have been many, many rejections. Uh, it's basically one third of the applications, uh, according to the date, to data from the Saxon Development Bank, have been either rejected or um, have been withdrawn by uh, by the applicants. And only um, around 20% of the applications are complete the first time they are submitted. This leads, of course, to some inefficiencies, such as uh, the, uh, the Saxon Development Bank uh, picking up the phone and uh, asking for um, uh, for additional information or paperwork from the from the applicant. Uh, and this, of course, leads also to the second uh, bullet point, which is delays between the approval and the disbursement. Um, often, as I was saying, further documents are unnecessary, and so it takes. Uh, uh, several weeks, even uh, 12 weeks from uh, the, the approval to the disbursement and uh, since the, um, the, the entrepreneurs are requested to or are willing to start their business, this might be uh, an issue. Uh, they might even be in, uh, in a need to, to ask for bridge financing elsewhere. And um, I said more flexibility in the financial product. Uh, we, we said that it's 20,000 euros maximum. Uh, this does not really reflect the, the maximum amount available for um, uh, microfinance. So uh, many, um, uh, many people ask for the, uh, the threshold to be uh, to be uh, increased to at least uh, the, the maximum available for microfinance. This for the gray areas, uh, but the success fact factors still remains and uh, uh, they uh, hinge on the uh, on the lean implementation structure. So 
which also made for a transparent communication and implementation processes. So uh, the, the financial instrument has been communicated very well. It, the, the, there, were, there were no doubts or no misunderstanding among the final uh, recipients on uh, how the, the process was, um, was structured and uh, uh, which were the, uh, their, um, uh, their requirements uh, and, the, uh, and the tasks they were required to perform and things like that. Of course, the synergies with local chambers were very, very uh, important because the, um, the chambers of industry and commerce, as well as other uh, sectoral associations, they have um, uh, they have the, the real touch of how the uh, entrepreneurs in um, uh, in their geographies are are doing and what they need, and so uh, liaising with them and cooperating with them was a, a surely um, surely an important feature. Uh, favorable terms and conditions. We have seen that uh, it's. Uh, we were talking about uh, micro loans at uh, at rates and other terms and conditions which were not easily uh, provided by other uh, either finance providers, and the complementarity of the advisory services which were offered. Uh, now the the final uh, the final two lines is. Um, the situation has changed in uh, in the past, so the unemployment rates in the region have decreased. Um, a number of commercial banks has stepped in and are now in either interested or are directly offering some uh, financial products for my micro entrepreneurs. The use of reflows has been consistent through consistent through the years, and uh, you have seen that it allowed the managing authority and the Saxon Development Bank to um, uh, provide for an increased number of uh, micro loans uh, in uh, in the region. So uh, there is still no clarity uh, whether this uh, this uh, this scheme will be replicated also in the future. So that's why we put this uh, this final question: Is the financial instrument victim of its own success? This is it for the moment. Um, happy to, to take questions. Uh, if uh... thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you, Eugenio, for yeah. this uh, very detailed presentation. Let's open the floor for uh, some question and comments. What I retain from 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 your presentation is the skinning the game. Maybe you could start with this. What do you mean by skinning the game? Uh, what does it mean? In, in in it's a jargon word. Yeah, this, no, skin in the game is uh, basically the, the request uh, from the, um, uh, the body issuing the, the financial product to the applicant to have some uh, a portion of own funds uh, so that uh, I would say there is no risk that uh, the, uh, the final recipient is, uh, um, is not committing enough on, uh, on the project. And we have seen that also in the, in the Bulgarian case study, uh, there was a similar a similar scheme. I, I don't remember if it was 20% or 25%, but still, it, it, it's quite common um, for, for these kind of products that uh, there is a so-called skin in the game. Okay. There's a question um, um, for these uh, financial instruments. Um, why they use the maximum of five years of operating uh, of operations for micro enterprises to be eligible for the financial instruments. Is that decision based on some legislation or specific analysis? Uh, it's not based on specific leg legislation, as far as I know. Uh, it should be based on the recommendation of the extant assessment. I guess that basically they looked at what was the um, what were the, the market gaps in the region? They saw that uh, that was the time frame where uh, new entrepreneurs were um, most in need of funding, and they were um, they were struggling the most to get uh, to get commercial funding. Uh, I guess that it's, it's as simple as that. Okay, um, so could uh, Sab or any other bank uh, introduce a new financial instrument funded by ESF um, and uh, let's say having a banking product, uh, for example, a structural product or a bond, and then forwarding it to the final recipients and investors. So uh, basically here, if it's, it's for the issuance of bonds, I guess it's referred to, to mini bonds. Uh, and which is uh, um, 
on their study by the European Commission to consider this, uh, how this could be considered as a financial instrument. Uh, this is uh, when it comes to mini bonds for uh, companies or micro companies, mainly companies, because micro companies are very difficult to, it's very difficult to consider the issues of uh, uh, bonds or mini bonds. Um, and maybe other structural products, I'm not too sure which other uh, structural products uh, is this concern, but I hope that at least when it comes to bonds, we, we answer this question. Eugenio, unless you want to add. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, we've seen a little bit uh, the, the type of uh, final recipients that, uh, that were targeted by, by this financial instrument. We, we were talking about really micro, uh, micro enterprises. So, uh, of course, the, the managing authority and the Saxon Development Bank, they, they can do basically whatever they want within the, uh, the limits of the regulation. But I would be surprised, uh, honestly, to, to see them using uh, more sophisticated products for such, uh, such type of uh, of final recipients, you know. So, uh, in your presentation, there were a number of points which uh, raised my attention. So, the interaction with the local chambers, the use of uh, several sources of funding, including combination with crowdfunding. So, could you maybe, in your opinion, what are the key features? If you have to characterize these financial instruments, what would you say are the key features of this case study? Well, surely the first one that uh, comes to my mind is the uh, is the combination with the advisory services which were um, which were offered uh, and also were received because uh, uh, fifty percent of final recipients uh, taking up uh, complementary but uh, not mandatory advisory services. Uh, um, it's I guess a, a good portion. Uh, so surely the the advisory services which were provided in, uh, under separate operations. So uh, this also gave a lot of uh, flexibility to the managing authority in terms of uh, uh, in terms of monitoring of the operation, in terms of availability of funds. Because I said, uh, if it was a single operation, then uh, it would have been more. Uh, complex to uh, to monitor at least in the 2014 2020 period another another feature is uh, I said some some kind of attention to this uh, to, to the skin in the game and to the fact that uh, it can be uh, an issue uh, for um, uh, for new entrepreneurs and for um, people with really uh, who are really uh, struggling for for funding so um, Given uh, given some some thoughts on um, uh, on, on this side of uh, uh, on this side, they they came up with the um, with the possibility of uh, pulling resources with the with the crowdfunding uh, platform. It's something that maybe uh, the the participants of today's webinar uh, who are more familiar with uh, with Fee Compass has uh, uh, have seen already because we we tackled this. Um, uh, um, this aspect already, and we saw that uh, it's not the first time that uh, um, managing authorities and crowdfunding platform try to work together. It's surely one of the very, very few times where um, they try to do so under the framework of a financial instrument. So another takeaway is uh, on funding is uh, we cannot take own funding for granted uh, when we when we speak about micro entrepreneurs, and we need to to figure out innovative ways to to help them uh, also in raising uh, the equity portion of the of their investment. Okay, thank you. Uh, very quick uh, question with this uh, very quick answer. You showed the default rate, which was actually very low. Why uh, you have uh, such a low default rate? So the the display default rate, which was uh, four percent, uh, there's many many ways to um, uh, to, to try and to explain it. Uh, first one is of course uh, having uh, more than half of the of the applicants and of the eligible applicants uh, being targeted with advisory services surely helps because they uh, they have been targeted with uh, um, uh, with services which I guess. At the end of the day, increase their uh, entrepreneurial skills and increase their uh, financial literacy. So they were better equipped than uh, when they started to run uh, a small business. So this again uh, underscores the importance of uh, 
um, of business development services and uh, also to some extent the um, uh, the, the cooperation with uh, with local associations and uh, local chambers of industry and commerce, because uh, if an idea was completely uh, completely crazy or uh, unsustainable, then uh, it was first the the chamber of commerce uh, saying, uh, "Look, dear applicant, you better not apply at all because this will never fly." And maybe also, I mean, we're still talking about uh, amounts that are quite manageable to be repaid in, uh, uh, in a, as we said, a six uh, years maturity. So uh, maybe also this, uh, this helped. I have to say that to be 100% honest, the, the data does not yet take into account potential COVID implications, but uh, we will see. Good. Well, I can see that there are no, no other questions in the chat, and I will stop here with your uh, presentation, not before thanking you very much for, for your effort and for stepping in in order to have also this presentation displayed uh, during this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let's move to the last case of today. Let's move to Poland. I can see uh, Alexandra uh, Kiatskov. Kiatkowska, uh, Director of the Financial Instruments uh, Development Office at BGK, who will speak about or will present the financial instruments for social economy implemented by BGK. So, Alexandra, good afternoon. So, good afternoon. Uh, thank Over you to very you. Much. Thank you very much for introducing me. Can you hear me? Can very well. well. Okay. Maybe you speak a bit closer to the microphone. Okay, I will try to do it. Okay, so uh, thank you very much once more. Uh, my name is Aleksandra Kwiatkowska and I'm representative of uh, Polish uh, Development uh, Bank. Uh, and maybe next slide, please. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I would like to say just a few words about, about uh, my institution, about Bank Gospodarstwa Krajowego, uh, BGK, which is the state uh, development bank with the mission to support social and economic development of, uh, of Poland. And the bank um, is acting as, um, as the manager of the National Fund for Social Entrepreneurship uh, with a total amount of uh, 32 million million uh, euros for social to support um, social economy uh, entities. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here you can see our whole uh, whole involvement uh, in financial instruments um, in Poland. Uh, total amount entrusted to 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 BGK in um, uh, 2014 uh, 2020 is over 3 billion, billion euros within different areas such as support for SMEs, innovation, revitalization, uh, labor market, um, high-speed internet, um, energy, energy efficiency, renewable energy and of course uh, social, uh, social economy. Next slide please. Mm. So uh, coming to, 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 to our role within, within um, ESF financial instruments, uh, BGK, BGK um, as I mentioned before, is acting as a fund of funds uh, a manager. With the structure of implementation of financial instruments, there is of course uh, managing authority uh, and uh, ministry of funds and regional policy plays this role. Uh, then there's intermediate body, the Ministry of Family and Social Policy. And uh, we as BGK, we, uh, uh, we, choose, uh, we choose a financial intermediaries uh, who are responsible for directly granting, uh, granting the laws. Uh, and uh, of course, our goal is to support social economy entities uh, such as social entrepreneurs, uh, NGOs, social cooperatives, or non-profit uh, uh, companies. For new perspective, this structure, this structure of implementation will uh, change a little bit. Uh, uh, the BGK will, will play a double role. We will be 
a fund of funds manager, but we uh, we will also be an intermediate body. So um, it's uh, quite challenging for us, but uh, uh, this will be the the the, the, the structure for, for for new programming period. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, BGK, BGK uh, provides financial instrument uh, for social economy since uh, since 2007. In uh, programming period 2007-2013, uh, we implemented uh, we implemented financial instrument under um, human capital uh, operational program uh, with total amount of 7.2 million uh, million euros. In current perspective, we implement uh, financial instrument within the knowledge education development uh, um, OP. But we also uh, we are also using the money uh, coming from um, human uh, capital OP. We we are using revolving funds for liquidity loans and for for guarantees. And for 2021 uh, 2027, we are planning to. Uh, to implement uh, implement loans as well as social venture uh, capital. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, within current uh, perspective, uh, we are providing three types of loans: uh, loans for start, uh, loans uh, for um, uh, development, and uh, liquidity loans. Uh, here you have the the key parameters of um, of this product. Um, uh, maybe what is what is important is that these loans are uh, these loans complement each other and the, the borrowers could uh, use them uh, convertibly. And as you can see, the, the key parameters the parameters are very um, preferential. Probably I don't want to go into details because you 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 have everything uh, on 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 this table. But what I would like to what I would like to to underline is that um, in March uh, 2020 we decided to to introduce a specific measures against the uh, COVID-19 impact, um, and we proposed the modification of of uh, key parameters of uh, of this product. Uh, and we propose, of course, more favorable conditions uh, for, for for our final uh, recipients. Uh, for example, we, intro we we proposed the the extension of loan maturity, um, additional six months of uh, grace period, um, uh, interest loan reduction reduction even up to uh, zero percent, uh, six months uh, uh, repayment holidays. Uh, so. So we 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 quick adapt or adjusted to 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 the to the to the situation. And uh, further to the above, uh, also in in 2020, we introduced a, a, a special type of loan, a, a liquidity loan, uh, to simply to tackle the liquidity issues. Which were faced by 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 social economy entities, um, and uh, what is what is also interesting, I think that in April this year we introduced a special type of uh, of liquidity loan, which is called a missionary loan, and this loan is um, is um, aiming at helping or employing uh, refugees from from Ukraine. Mm. Next slide, please. Um, here you have you have uh, some 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 numbers, some some results. Of course, the program is still in 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 progress, but uh, but uh, you can see that the, the the largest number of loans in terms of uh, in terms of value are these up to twenty two thousand uh, euros, and they account for. Seventy-eight percent of uh, all of of our our loans. Next slide, please. And uh, up till now, the total the total number of loans is one hundred one thousand uh, uh, more than one thousand and two hundred, including uh, nine uh, nine hundred seventy-three 
from uh, from current perspective which constitutes uh, over 81 percent of appointed value and most of these loans are for for social economy entities operating um, over 12 months um, the borrowers uh, declares declares um, uh, so far to create uh, uh, more than 1200 uh, 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 200 new jobs including uh, 917 from the current perspective of appointed value of uh, of uh, more than 1200 so uh, so uh, as you can see we will we will still we'll, we we still have to do an effort to 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 achieve uh, achieve uh, the the indicators but uh, fortunately we have have one year and a half to to do it and and we are sure that we will achieve we will achieve uh, these indicators uh, of course uh, these numbers are very important but uh, but uh, most i think the most important in social economy are are, are the people and uh, here you can you can see some some examples some pictures um, uh, of our final final recipients uh, for example you can see uh, association helping uh, disabled children this association is called uh, we are all together uh, they run they run a sensory integration center for children uh, an integration kindergarten and um, occupational therapy workshop. Uh, the other example is uh, social cooperative Dalba. This cooperative runs the the cooperative brewery, where the beer is brewed in a in a traditional way. But the most uh, important thing is that uh, the people uh, who are working uh, there. Um, um, uh, the, disabled, the people in, with disabilities, and the the, the third example, uh, Pro Omnis Foundation, and uh, uh, the, the their activities are uh, are aiming at creating uh, um, a system of assistance of uh, people uh, uh, at risk of of, of marginalisation. Uh, next slide please so uh, now I, I i come to 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 to, to new perspective to, to to our plans and to conclusions from from the the, the current perspective uh, so we are in the process of preparing um, a financial instrument for esf uh, esf plus uh, within the latest um, evaluation uh, study in uh, social economy sector, uh, the financial gap was um, was estimated uh, in the in the debt financing area, and it amounted to about uh, 13.5 million euros, which is the the, the lower limit, um, and maximum uh, and maximum. Uh, 71 million uh, million euros um, the study also shows uh, the, the, the that the new social economy entities are, are established mainly owing to the ESF uh, resources and um, according to this evaluation a very small group of social economy entities is using loan and, uh, and credit and uh, we know that this results from um, uh, their, uh, their inability to to establish um, adequate uh, adequate collateral for 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 bank loans and 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 credit and the other constatation is that the loan instrument should be um, launched uh, on similar terms uh, to, uh, to 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 vote uh, applied uh, in this in this programming uh, period uh, the next slide please so what 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 are we planning what are we planning for for for, uh, for future perspective for, for new programming period um, as i i mentioned before the the study 
the, 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 the assessment study shows uh, that we should continue uh, our support uh, on similar terms. So uh, uh, we will continue with, uh, with uh, loans for start and, uh, and loans for uh, development. Uh, uh, but uh, there will be a possibility of, uh, of partially uh, remission of the capital uh, within these this loans. Uh, uh, from the revolving funds, we will offer guarantees and, and liquidity loans. And uh, we will also offer um, social venture, social venture capital, which will be a completely new new product for uh, for us. Next slide, please. Uh, so, um, as, as you can see, as, as uh, BGK, we have uh, we have a quite uh, we have quite a lot of experience in in supporting social economy entities, and of course we. Uh, we uh, we are acting in close cooperation with uh, with the ministries, with our managing authority, with uh, our intermediate body, uh, and uh, of course our common support is is aiming at establishing a sustainable system of uh, of social economy entities uh, financing uh, based on 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 repayable resources and uh, simply make them independent from granting system. Uh, we also would like to build a trust in, in financial instruments by promoting uh, them among uh, social economy entities. And uh, we are working uh, um, on increasing the number of, uh, of financial institutions cooperating with, uh, with social economy uh, entities. Uh, next slide, please. Um, at the end, I would like to 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 show you to 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 underline that our our borrowers take successfully part in national and international uh, competitions, um, such as, uh, for example, the certificate of the social and solidarity economy mark of quality. Uh, this is on the national level. And uh, within the CEB award for, for social social uh, cohesion. So uh, what are what are the lessons learned? Uh, will be uh, my my last uh, um, my last uh, few words about it. I I I listened very carefully to to the previous presentations and. Uh, I agree with almost everything with, with the previous year said, and I have to underline that what is really important is uh, the very good cooperation with all stakeholders, uh, with ministries, with, uh, with um, uh, intermediate body, with managing authority, but also with uh, financial intermediaries and, and financial recipients. Uh, and, you know, without this, this cooperation, it wouldn't be possible to to adjust uh, very quickly to the current economic situation and to change, for example, the parameters of the of the financial instruments and to uh, to introduce uh, and to introduce uh, new ones uh, such a, such a, a liquidity loan, for 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 example. And, uh, what else? Uh, I also agree that we can use in uh, in uh, in more extent um, a possibility of uh, combined products. Uh, um, for example, uh, we we had there is a possibility to combine, of course, uh, loans with grants. But uh, in my opinion, uh, a good practice is to 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 give give the loans with uh, with possible of uh, of uh, capital rebate, we have uh, uh, an exper experience in uh, in this not only for social economy entities but but for for other products. And it, of of course, it's not the in this perspective. It it wasn't European money because uh, there wasn't such a possibility. But we have uh, uh, an experience with with revolving funds uh, in this area. 
and uh, I think that that for now that that, that that's it. Thank you very much uh, for, for 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 your attention. And if you have uh, some questions, I I, I try to, to to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alexandra. So what what I retain is, uh, uh, of course, the 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 large financial gaps uh, that you uh, that you find in in the market, and that social enterprise uh, are um, have a lot of difficulty in accessing loans, and actually they use mainly their own resources and uh, grants to to uh, to finance their 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 projects. And I guess this uh, difficulty in accessing loan is also due to the lack of collateral in one hand and also uh, credit history, which is what is uh, um, typically required by a bank. Um, you mentioned the future looks like uh, a capital rebate uh, could be an option, but also you spoke about social venture capital. Maybe let's start from this. Uh, what, 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 what is exactly this uh, social venture capital? What do you mean by that? <laughs> so, you know, I, I, maybe at this stage, I, I'm afraid of this, of this question. And mm. uh, really, but because at this stage, I, I don't want to go into the details because okay. we are still uh, in the process of programming period. Okay. And, uh, Sorry. And <laughs> Sorry about this. So I'll take it back, and maybe uh, I'll, I'll I'll go into into okay. a, a, another question. Uh, but it will be a, so uh, appointment for another event uh, to let's say dig more uh, in detail about the social venture capital, which is probably venture capital with an orientation uh, to social and uh, uh, social impact, which is something that it's uh, among the financial interests. But again, maybe it's a bit too early and without disclosing the plans of, of BGK. Yeah, because in general, this will be for, for these social entities which are which uh, develop this uh, and, and they, ha they have a potential to, 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 to increase, to develop, uh, but uh, we are still in programming and discussing how, uh, in discussion how it will be uh, managed, how it will be um, projected. So maybe next time I, I will have more details on it. No problem, no problem. Let's start from what you, let's say, your presentation and maybe to expand a bit uh, more uh, on uh, what, uh, how is the selection process uh, uh, of the financial intermediaries? So uh, we always uh, choose uh, choose uh, financial intermediaries under public uh, procurement way. It's 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 a general rule, and we always apply it. And uh, um, uh, no matter the source of uh, of funds, uh, national uh, revolving uh, EU funds, we always choose them under under public procurement law. Okay. And uh, there is a question about bank promissory note as a standard collateral, uh, which uh, are considered a huge barrier for access finance for social enterprises. Um, does BGK consider a change in collateral option uh, uh, compared to what we've seen today in other countries? Okay, so this is always a dilemma because on the one hand we don't we don't want to have a, a default, uh, and on the other hand there is always a discussion that uh, that uh, that we we exaggerate with, with with collaterals. I think that because uh, there is possibility to not to use uh, not to use a collateral, but it's up to financial uh, intermediaries to design according to their methodology, to their assessment. Um, I, in my opinion, the blank promissory note, it's, it's, it's a minimum and it's not, uh, it's not a lot, but uh, uh, there, is, uh, there is possibility not to use any of, of, uh, of collaterals, but, uh, but uh, we have to keep, keep the balance. Uh, Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, also, there is a question about the future of ESF Plus, uh, which uh, to some extent you covered, but um, seems to be uh, a target financing source to support your work in this. Uh, what about InvestEU? 
uh, which is, I would not say, uh, well, which as uh, Anne explained at the beginning, is another form of accessing EU funding. Uh, are there any plans? Well, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not involved in in uh, in working of invest EU. Just I, I I give you the perspective of BGK and uh, and um, uh, personally uh, we are responsible for for um, uh, for share management. Plus, yes, yeah, share yeah. management funds. Yes, yeah, so I can uh, I can um, give you more details about uh, about uh, about uh, future future programming period 2021-27 as regards ESF plus fund. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not involved in 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 the EU, in investment. Okay, no no problem, and maybe um, a, a question. Uh, you mentioned the capital rebate. Um, for what kind of a project activity you you would envisage that? Um, and do you have already have in mind some kind of percentage just amount of the capital rebate? If you can disclose that, uh, only if you can disclose. So, we we as I as I as I uh, as I mentioned we. We have some experience in in, in using the, the, the this combined uh, types of of, uh, of of loans, but we uh, we possibly only for for revolving uh, revolving funds in this uh, in this perspective. And uh, for example, this capital rebate is possible within liquidity loan, which is which uh, which uh, which is financing from legacy funds from uh, capital OP. Uh, we have uh, another product, um, um, accessibility fund. It's for, for 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 disabled people, and we also use this possibility of capital capital rebate. And in the future perspective, we will use uh, this within the loan for stars and loan for development. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you. I guess there was a question, but it was not necessarily addressed to you. Let me see if I I can cover that. Um, uh, if a final, final recipient, which is listed in, listed in, a, uh, in a local stock exchange, is funded by DAB with specific financial instruments, are there any restrictions uh, to the use of funds or any reporting monitoring? So this is a very complex question. So in general, uh, stock uh, listed companies in stock exchange financed by DAB, they do receive uh, loans or any operation from DAB in general in general using um, eib resources in case they are using a resource managed by dab but which is a resource of the european commission even uh, if it's a, a guarantee from the european commission what is not possible is to have for the, to have for the same operation uh, similar or the same sources coming from the european commission this is uh, not possible. So you cannot put EU money on EU money uh, for the same type of project. So this is, I would say, a, a, an important rule, and I hope that uh, uh, I answer uh, Tano's question. Uh, I will um, stop here. I would like to thank uh, Alexandra. Thank you very much thank you. for your uh, participation and your efforts. And uh, I would like to move to uh, the last part uh, of uh, today. And uh, uh, I would like to give the floor to Andre, Andrea da Pozzo, who is policy officer in social and uh, um, uh, sorry, inclusive entrepreneurship unit at DG Employment. Uh, Andrea, are you uh, with us? I cannot see you yet. Yeah, can you see me? Not yet. Uh, I should be visible. Uh, can you hear me anyway? Yes. I try to switch on again. I'm online now. Okay. Ah, uh, now I, we can Opa. see you. Yeah. Okay. So for the conclusions uh, of today, um, let me confess that uh, uh, during this very very interesting meeting. I, I suppose we had uh, the chance to analyze uh, in details uh, three between the most relevant financial instruments implemented uh, under the ESF uh, uh, recently. 
uh, we learned <clears throat> about uh, those three different case studies, uh, which are also uh, developed on paper and downloadable by uh, the Fee Compass website. Uh, what I retain um, going starting from the Bulgarian um, uh, national uh, financial instruments, which uh, we said uh, was a is a capital guarantee and risk sharing loans uh, dealing with microfinance. Uh, the uh, it was interesting to see the perspective of the the fund of fund structure, which is also common to other uh, to the um, to the Polish uh, uh, financial instruments, uh, but also to see the point of view the, of the MFI, the uh, uh, CIS credit microfinance provider. Um, it was, a, a, it, I think, a, the, the Bulgarian financial instrument. It is a, a very good example of cooperation between the two levels, uh, the two financial actors, uh, which are involved, uh, usually involved in the construction of a, of, a, of, a, of the ESF financial instruments. Um, it was also interesting to note uh, um, for the Bulgarian one, but also for the for the others. Um, the fact that uh, the business uh, development development services are. Um, a key aspect of a successful uh, financial instruments. Uh, uh, this is now quite now quite clear to to us and to to, and therefore we uh, uh, support and we wanted to support this aspect and this possibility also uh, when designing the new uh, uh, the new CPR regulation, which is uh, the which are the rules. Um, declining the, the, the financial instruments for the future. So good news is that uh, for 2021, 27 uh, programming period, that the combination uh, between uh, of grants and financial instruments in one single uh, operation will be much more uh, easy. We'll, we'll create synergies uh, and, and we hope we, we will avoid the, the, the mentioned uh, cannibalization possibility uh, that uh, we have to be honest. Uh, it it happened in the past. Another good news for the for for the Bulgarians, but also for the other uh, member states implementing financial instrument is that the exempt assessment uh, is uh, much more simplified in the uh, in the in the current programming period. So uh, less uh, administrative burdens for 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 the managing authorities to prepare and to set up financial instruments. Uh, on the side of the German regional financial instruments, um, again, a microfinance facility, uh, it was very interesting to see the, that in Saxony, uh, the Sax Saxony Development, Development Bank um, uh, dealt uh, directly uh, with, the, with, the with the design and implementation of, of the of the financial instrument, also with the relatively low low uh, management cost and fees uh, um, share, uh, two point sixty eight percent. It it is quite um, I would say efficient uh, at least from from our point of view. Um, it was interesting to know to see that uh, the the target group uh, of the um, of these uh, Saxony uh, financial instruments were not only micro enterprises but also startups, which are even more. Um, I say difficult to finance in the in the in the in the social sector. Again, a uh, key characteristic uh, of the uh, of the financial instruments implemented in in Saxony was also the combination of grants uh, um, and and uh, and the financial instruments, but with the form uh, which was possible in the past programming period, meaning using the uh, two separate uh, operations uh, uh, to 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 deal with those uh, um, technical assistance and uh, and and business development uh, support uh, which was not easy uh, and we hope that uh, with the modification of the rules uh, will uh, we will facilitate uh, the the development of micro credit schemes very interesting also to note uh, for the Germany uh, financial instrument where the synergies with the local uh, chambers, so the uh, and and also the synergies with the crowd crowdfunding platform because uh, also crowdfunding, uh, as already mentioned by Eugenio, it is a a matter which we explored uh, within the Fi Compass. Uh, there is also a fact sheet. Uh, uh, which is available again in the website and that you can consult if you are interested to 
better understanding, uh, better understand what uh, what's what are the possibilities for the managing authorities to cooperate with these uh, crowdfunding platforms. Um, another thing very interesting for for the for the Saxony financial instrument were the use of reflows uh, that made the financial instrument uh, I would say fairer and also equally uh, distrib distributed over uh, the the full region um, and. To move to the to the Polish uh, um, financial instrument, uh, uh, we have seen some similar aspects to the uh, to the to the Bulgarian one because it was implemented uh, um, at with the fund of fund structure by the National Development Bank (BGK). Uh, but there was also um, financial there were also financial instruments uh, delivering uh, the financial instruments on the ground. Uh, again, the it was clear that, that, that there was a fruitful cooperation between the two levels, uh, the cooperation between all the levels and the stakeholders involved in preparing and implementing financial instruments. It, it is key to the success of any financial instrument in, in general, but even more uh, under the ESF uh, rules and, uh, and, uh, and considering the, the specific target population uh, which the ESF address it. Um, for the Polish one, uh, we are happy uh, that uh, to 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 know to listen that uh, the financial instrument will continue uh, in the in the 2021-27 programming period, and to see also that uh, together with the loans, uh, Poland is uh, thinking to um, to open the use of financial instruments also to social venture capital. We will learn later on uh, what exactly it, uh, it is uh, uh, social venture capital addressed by financial instruments. And I think another characteristic that was highlighted by the Polish um, financial instrument was, uh, uh, which is also common to, to, to the financial instruments in general, was the flexibility of financial instruments that are uh, that are uh, able to be adapted uh, very quickly to the uh, contingent situations like crisis. Uh, in this case, um, for instance, uh, we can think to the COVID-19 uh, or to the uh, to the Ukrainian uh, crisis uh, more recently. So, uh, in general, we uh, had a very uh, useful overview of all the typical um, support given by the ESF in the form of financial instruments. Um, as I said, all these uh, case studies are uh, all the presentation will be available, of course, in the website. Together with the paper, the, the, the papers, the, the case studies in the paper version are already uh, available in the website. So, download them if you want to know more. Um, in the website, there is, a, of course, a lot more uh, material for the for the ESF, uh, for the all the ESF stakeholders to to learn, to study, for the uh, um, for the future implementation and designing of financial instruments. So, now I would like to conclude. To conclude, I would like to to repeat uh, like uh, like uh, a mantra that the, the 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 financial instruments schemes for the ESF are not. Uh, in competition with the usual form of delivering the ESF, which are grants, uh, but um, instead they have a, a complementary role, uh, allowing managing authorities doing more with scarces, uh, scarce resources. Um, but uh, we have seen that financial instruments are more uh, efficient than grants. Therefore, uh, as a commission, as a DG employment, we uh, continue to support the, the the implementation of financial instruments we continue to provide um we will continue to provide uh, more uh, um, awareness raising more knowledge uh, more material to implement financial instruments to uh, not only to the managing authorities but also to the stakeholders uh, of the esf in general uh, these we will do it uh, Via the Fee Compass, mainly via the Fee Compass website and the Fee Compass um, uh, advisory platform uh, services. So, together with, uh, as I said, the studies, uh, the, the the papers uh, that we are publishing, and the events that we will do, um, the next one uh, I can announce it uh, will be in October in Brussels and in person. So, stay tuned. 
if you want to learn more about financial instruments for education and skills. But um, I would like to mention a, a service that is um, that will continue uh, in the 2021-27 fee compass, which is uh, capacity building services. So, in fact, uh, very quickly, uh, the managing authorities, but also the financial institutions can apply um, asking to the commission, to the geographical units for activating a capacity building service uh, in case they want to know more, they want to deepen uh, their knowledge, they want to raise issues to the commission and to the EIB. Um, thanks to this uh, uh, possibility, uh, we can uh, manage to uh, deliver this uh, capacity building, uh, which are in synthesis kind of uh, Full immersion, some days of uh, full immersion presentations and um, exchange of point of view and uh, legal also aspects um, between the on one side the managing authorities and financial intermediaries and on the other side the EIB Commission and Fee Compass um, experts. So this was the last uh, announcement, and now to really conclude because it's late, I think. Uh, let me thank also on behalf of the DG Employment, all the, first of all, the, the moderator, Bruno, uh, my head of unit who had to leave uh, soon, um, and, and the speakers, uh, Dimitar, Martina, Eugenio, Alexandra, and uh, the FICOMPAS uh, logistical organization, uh, the communication team, which covered the event uh, via the social media. Big, big thank. Uh, to everybody for uh, having uh, uh, assisted to the to the webinar. Go in peace and see you in October. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Andrea. Thank you bye very bye. much for for your kind words. Uh, so, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're we're leading toward the end of this uh, webinar, and I really enjoy and I really hope that you have enjoyed the different session of this afternoon. My turn to. Uh, to thank the various speakers of today, which uh, made themselves available, uh, the attendees, uh, you who, who stayed with us until the end, and of course the members of the FICOMPAS team, which uh, uh, made this event possible.